to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, you know, doing our radio show, we record this show and we always do a, a restart on the show. It seems like I, like I always make a mistake in the first 30 seconds. Today might have been my worst mistake of all because when we started to record the show, I didn't even have the microphone uh, next to my mouth. It was two feet away. So um, I got to do a do-over. We got to do a redo. But you know, like in life, you don't get do-overs. You know, when you're... When you're uh, Playing those computer games that young people play, and you're uh, and you know they say you you're playing, and all of a sudden your character, your avatar, dies. They give you a new life, and you get to do it over. But that's not the way it is uh, in 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 real life. Uh, you don't get do overs. You, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to live, once to die, and then the judgment. But having said that, you know the where you spend eternity is 100 percent under your control. You get to choose. God gave you a, a spiritual, rational soul with the freedom to choose him or not. The Bible says, if you are unfaithful to me, I am always faithful. But if you deny me, I must deny you because I cannot deny myself. If you are unfaithful, Jesus is still always moving towards you in mercy. Always moving towards you in mercy. But if you deny him access to your heart, he's not going to invade you. He's not going to... He, he, he's... he's He's given you that freedom of will. In our lives, we don't get to have a, a, a new life. If we, if, if we come to an end of our life, and as St. Thomas Akempis says, everyone always dies sooner than they think. And a, and a moment comes sooner than you think. It could be today. In fact, there are people that are listening to this show today that will die today. It's a daunting thing. There's millions of people listening to this show. Um, so this is your moment in, in time to say yes to Jesus, yes to all that God is. Uh, you get to have, there are no do-overs. You don't get to have a second life, but you do get to have a second start if you start now. If you say to Jesus, Jesus, I don't understand you. I don't understand the whole everything, but I know in my heart I have an upward yearning for truth. I have an upward yearning for justice. I have an upward yearning for beauty. I have an upward yearning for love. I have a feeling of wanting to go home. And Jesus I want my home to be in you. I open up my heart. I give you my life. I surrender all. Give me a fresh start. And in some ways, then, you do get to have a new life because Jesus said you must be born again. You'll, be, you'll have a spiritual rebirth. Everything in your life will begin to make sense, and your life will get simpler because you begin to make decisions based on truth, and then all the confusion begins to go away. You know, one of the things that we're seeing in the world today is a confusion in regards to manliness. I used to talk about masculine virtue. Uh, in fact, the start of my show, I think, still says that. But in my day-to-day -day life, I just challenge men to be manly, to live in the manly virtues. And uh, with all the gender confusion, all that's going on, we need to reach out to our young men and help them through that transition from boyhood to being a man, uh, the rite of passage, as some would call it. And we have a guest Today, I've been st stoked to have him on. We had him on once before. It's been a couple of years. And he and I have been battling to get a time together. And finally, he's here uh, from coming from his farm in North Carolina, Jason Craig. Aloha, Jason. Aloha. Did I, did I pronounce that correctly? I've been... Yeah, aloha. That's good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, so, so, Jason, you're somewhere in North Carolina. Paint the picture for us about your farm. I noticed when you, when you opened up the door to your office, it was a slider like a barn would have. I don't know. I don't know if you're out in a garage or where you are, but paint a picture for us what it's where you are and what your farm is all about. Give us that. Sure. Give us that feeling. Yeah, that's a convert. Well, full disclosure, I'm at my friend's house because he has better internet connection than I do. That is oh, a okay. barn door. It goes to his wood shop over there, and I do out that window. I see sheep and chickens. That's his thing. Uh, we. We live on a farm in the foothills of North Carolina. So, if, you know, North Carolina, is, we've got the mountains, we've got the beach and everything in between. We're, uh, we're kind of in the, the bottom part of the mountains. So rolling green hills, pretty beautiful. How, how close are you to Asheville or Virginia Beach? Are you... 45 minutes east From... of Asheville. 
Beautiful country. You know, we rolled right past your house when we shot oh. uh, season two, which is, should be airing about the time this show comes out. Oh, you could have stopped long, by. We could long have ride home. I could have come and killed a pig with you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but tell, yeah. tell us what, what, what do you have on your farm? What animals are you raising? Sure. Our main enterprise, we have a, pro, I think, North Carolina's smallest grade A dairy. We milk four Jersey cows, but that's upwards of five gallons per cow a day. So it's exponential. We make yogurt. A little bit of sell a little bit of milk, uh, and then we have, whenever we have the waste from any milk, so skim milk is waste to us. We don't drink that stuff. Um, Ugh, who would or, want that? Uh, yeah, it's pig food. So we feed that to the pigs, and um, we have pigs, and when we have meat birds, and then uh, so we, we you mean chickens or what do you mean? Yeah, sorry, meat chickens. Uh, so for, of poultry, we have the laying hens, and then the the meat chickens, which are they they. That's kind of on a cycle. We, you know, grow those yeah. as chick and grow them about ten weeks, and then put them in the freezer. Put them in the so. Uh, wait a minute. They they only live for ten weeks. Well, these so there's laying hens, which you can have for years. Yeah. But these meat birds, they call them broilers. They've been bred. Uh, we use ones that are actually not the mutant crazy ones that are in chicken right. houses. Right. They grow in like eight weeks. They grow so fast they have heart attacks and they're. You know, the, those giant chicken breasts in the store that like yeah. collapse, the, you know, they collapse the chickens on the legs. So we have a slightly more heritage breed, but they only they only take about 10 weeks to go from chick to uh, they're just eating machines. I mean, Make, they just me, eat. makes me hungry, yeah. man. <laughs> it's yeah, it's good. But you so you're so your meat uh, chicken, you do that in 10 weeks. And then what about you have pigs on your property, too, or no? Do have pigs. Yeah, we always have some kind of rotation of pigs right now. We don't at this very precise moment because you ate one week. Because we ate, yeah, we ate the last one. So yeah. our last run was six. <laughs> we had six of this last run, but we get them. We don't breed them, so we get them as piglets, raise them up, and then we either do them for our family or you know friends. Are you or, having two or three or four pigs then, or? Yeah, that's yeah, somewhere under a half dozen. I okay, mean, so okay, so then uh, here's the big question. I can see you naming the cows. <laughs> what are their names? Abigail, Dorothy, Isabel, Lick and Laura. And then we have a calf named Penny. Penny. Last week we had a bull calf, but he's he's not around anymore. He was he was veal nice. So you know he was I mean? he was so, delicious. So yes, you don't yeah. name you didn't name him, did you? We did, but we kind of forget for you know obvious yeah, if, reasons. Yeah, if you're gonna and you don't name the pigs, do you? No, we don't name anything them. you're gonna eat doesn't pig. get a name. In other words, no, we come here now. My wife though, let me but she says <laughs> anybody who won't who won't eat. An animal you've na you've named on the farm. She said your kids aren't hungry enough. <laughs> <She will. laughs> I have spent seven years with Abigail. She's our first cow, and I would feel weird. But my wife said, "Nope, grind her up, put her in the freezer." <laughs> yeah. So, so you while your kids are freezer. crying <laughs> <laughs> through their tears, they're uh, eating this that's delicious that's former pet, as they was. That's true. <laughs> no, but but so so uh, so the pigs don't get normally don't get named. You just call them bacon. Piggy, bacon. So yeah, what? Can we, so pig. okay. So now the pig is how old when you're when it's time to be eaten? Uh, well, I you know I just did a pig recently. It's only eighty hundred pounds maybe, and I liked that a lot better. But we typically wait like six months, eight months, and they can go from piglet to two hundred fifty pounds in six months. So man, I just had it, breakfast and I'm and I'm hungry already. <laughs> well, we <laughs> today we're having. I, I told Kay this morning. Today we had bacon for breakfast. And then we had, I think, ham for lunch, and then we're having pork chops. I mean, it's a very versatile now, animal. Okay, so yeah, very. <laughs> well, so here's the thing: I'm a, I'm a keto guy. I've been on the so-called Atkins regimen since the late '90s when I began to compete in tandem surfing. You know, I had to I had to make weight, but I didn't want to lose muscle. Right. And I feel so. I'm going to tell you the last three days. It was our anniversary. Cindy's my anniversary. I went off my keto regimen, uh, you know, had more carb. I, normally, I try to keep under 24 carbs a day, and I feel sluggish. I've gained four pounds of water, maybe at least, you know, just you know, that, that the, the sugar carbs make you retain water. You feel inflammation, and so I'm back on my, my, my protein regimen again today, and I feel I have, I have a lot of muscle for a guy that's my age, and, uh, and uh, so the, the, the protein regimen – Right, it sounds like basically you have a keto farm. You're not raising. You're not. Are you raising vegetables or anything like that? 
We're we're planting. Yeah, actually, before I left, we were working the garden, so we're yeah. about to plant. We yeah, sure. I eat some vegetables, but yeah, we. I mean, we love. Of course, uh, uh, vegetable carbs are good carbs. They're fiber carbs. They're, they're not. They're not nature's candy that you're eating out there. Right. But yeah, right. so basically, if I came out there, it's just like a keto environment. You could eat. Yeah, and and eat healthy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Grass fed from the farm. Call That's call your next uh, call your next. Uh, Pig keto for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're talking with Jason Craig. He is the author. The uh, real quick, what's the name of the new book? Leaving Boyhood Behind. Have you done it yet? It's out. <laughs> no, Harry. Have you left Boyhood Behind? Yet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you have five, when well, you so. have six children, right? You That's pretty right. much as soon as you have your first child, you've left that behind because you yeah, something got a man up. Like you got to take care of business. We're talking with Jason, Jason Craig. We love this guy. Second time on our show. We're going to talk more about rites of passage, uh, a little bit more about uh, butchering a pig maybe too. Who knows? This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Hey, everybody. We love this guy. His name is John Flynn. Uh, his name is he's Johnny Kickstarter. That's, that's his nickname. Oh, my gosh. He did this most beautiful website for us. We just brought it up yesterday. Go and visit the deepadventure.com website. You can go there and you can become a, uh, a Patreon member and help support our radio show. Uh, and you get to hear, see the radio show uh, early, uh, even earlier than the network gets it. And our TV show, Long Ride Home, season two should be coming out about the time this show airs of Long Ride Home. You get to get that months before the network gets it if you go to our website and support us. Uh, but there you've got links to all kinds of cool stuff, including the bookstore where my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, is. And my first book, which was an Amazon bestseller, Deep in the Wave, A Surfing Guide to the Souls, there for you. So go to our website, and there's a contact form really easy to find. Email me. Let me know what's going on. Ask me some questions I can use on the radio show. And you can sign up for our email newsletter so you can get all kinds of free stuff from doing that. So uh, go to our new website that Johnny Kickstarter, John Flynn, did for us. We're so grateful to the great work that he did. We're, we have as our guest today Jason Craig. Uh, he's a farmer in the beautiful, beautiful area of North Carolina. Hey, Jason, how far are you from the JMB Cigar Factory store? You know what I'm talking about? How far are you from that? Oh, well, the the one just over the border, or no, that one is... Uh, it may be just over the border, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, maybe 45 minutes. That'd be my answer. So you could, by, by the time we're wasting doing this show, you could go there and get yourself a box of cigars. And... Could, I could do that. See, the <laughs> problem is I gotta, be, I gotta be back in time to milk the cows. And, and, and pick I'm up cooking. your kids for school and all that, too. Oh, uh, no, at, he's at Wood Shop. Just one of them is at Wood Shop, and then I've got... How oh, cool. Yeah. Then, hey, so so what time, what, what's your normal day like? Give us that. Sure. My wife and I wake up early, her earlier than me. She what does that mean? Up. What does early mean? She wakes up about 4.30. So when the first then, rooster crows. <laughs> so she's before the roosters. Before the and roosters, that, okay. Yeah, we we don't let roosters uh, too near the house because, uh, yeah, for that very reason. They're annoying, yeah. aren't they? You know, we have yeah. it here in Hawaii, dude. We have um, feral roosters and chickens, especially over in Molokai because oh, yeah. there's different areas of the islands where they fight. They do cockfighting, right? Oh, yeah, and if the yeah. bird isn't good enough, it just seems to find its way out into the wilderness because yeah. they're, they're shot full of hormones so oh, yeah. badly, you know, like, <laughs> they're, like they're all stressed out, like yeah. guys juicing when they're lifting weights. So <laughs> we'll get these feral roosters, and there's and and over Molokai, where my home used to be, all the women were upset because they're there with these feral cats. So they got rid of the feral cats, and guess who's there now? The feral roosters feral have roosters. taken over because the cats were getting rid of them. So, yeah, there's nothing more annoying than a rooster crowing yeah, an hour well, before sunrise, you know, it's yeah. horrible. Well, my wife, my wife beats the rooster, and then I get up five thirty, six. We pray. And, tell me about uh, that. Wait a minute. Tell me about that. You get together. Tell me about the prayer time. Actually, our prayer time together is in the evening. We have our morning meditation together next to each other on the couch, mm -hmm. but that's silent. It's just it's silent. We have as much silence before the kids wake up as and possible. And how long is that? Uh, well, minimum looking for 30 minutes. And you, and you're meditating on the day scriptures or liturgy of the hours yeah, or various, we, we, we both read whatever devotional books we're reading at the time. Right now she's using a, a, a meditation book by Fulton J. Sheen. I'm reading divine intimacy, which is a classic Carmelite spirituality. 
Beautiful. In a book and um, it's kicking my butt. Okay, and, so a lot of my my prayer life is a lot of reading too. Are you, I really, you know, if you're doing it in a in a contemplative contemplative way, when you read and then when something strikes you, you you stop and you let the Lord speak yeah. to you. Yeah, I th- I mean, Saint Teresa of Avila said she didn't go to prayer without a book, so I take her advice. I don't go without it. Yeah, and that it's kind of like I always tell my kids when we're trying to teach them this is. It's kind of like when you kick off a swimming pool, you know, the reading kicks you off and you're floating and it's great. And then all of a sudden you realize you're not floating anymore. And, oh, but there's another wall and you can kick off of that one, you mm-hmm. know, and, and that, that's the, instead of me just sitting with my own distracting, sinful, self-absorbed, narcissistic thoughts, uh, whenever those creep up, I can go right back to whatever I'm reading and that. And you know, the Catholic you know. Church is so wise because I know um, for a period of time, I know, but experienced the Lord in the Catholic charismatic renewal a long time ago. And then I kind of drifted because most of the people I knew uh, were not Catholic. I went to a Baptist university and non-denominational people. And they said, you got to do spontaneous prayer, which really wasn't the norm at all in the church in the Avalos time. Um, uh, and so I'm trying to come up with spo- – because you don't want to do vain repetition, as they called it, right? That's right, right. And so I found myself making up prayers, but they were the same prayers every day anyway, just different versions yeah. of it. And I was bored to death, what I'm sure God was too. A vain repetition is vain only if you're doing it in a vain way. And right. so to open up the Catholic uh, Liturgy of the Hours and to pray the Psalms and to pray the Glory Bees and, to, and then to, to do the Lectio type Divina as you read devotionals, what a beautiful way for the two of you to start the day. So then yeah. the first kid wakes up and says, oh, I want breakfast or what? Yeah. yeah so, well, or, or do the cows wake up? When, when do the cows get? No, milked? we sometimes if, if we're, if it's a yogurt making day, I have to go out to the barn and get that started. Cause it's an all day process. Now are you milking when no. you got milking machines? We, now we have bucket milkers. So we have machines. I hand milked for about six years and, um, that's tiring. So, but yeah. now, yeah, now actually to go grade a, we really needed to have the machines because that's it's much more sanitary and you don't yeah. have a big open bucket just underneath the cow. Yeah, so, I just uh, remember as a kid uh, being sitting. I think I was a hundred feet away, but I was probably more like twelve feet away. But I remember getting a, a squirt of milk from a yeah. the guy aiming at me, getting a good warm. Oh uh, yeah, dose yeah, of you milk. Can sh- you can shoot it. Oh yeah, I used to go out with my coffee cup every morning and then the, the fresh <laughs> milk right in the coffee. Cup. <laughs> Every more because it comes out at 90 degrees, so it didn't cool down the coffee. Oh, there you go, dude. What are we doing? Have, yeah, I'll, I'll come by every morning and get my cream from you. <laughs> well, we're talking with Jason Craig, and Jason Craig has written a book called The Rite of Passage Leading Leaving Boyhood. No, you got that totally wrong. Okay, yeah. I got it. To- okay, good. I'm glad because this would be a chance for people to listen, li- lean in, and really listen. What is it called? Leaving Boyhood Behind. Leaving Boyhood Behind. But isn't there? Uh, isn't that the subtitle? What's the main title? Yeah. Well, the the, the EWTN series was Rites of Passage, Leaving Boyhood Behind, and then our Sunday visitor decided to call that one. It was uh, Leaving Boyhood Behind, Reclaiming Catholic Brotherhood. Wait, but our Sunday visitor published that book. Yeah. They yeah. Mu- you must be a good writer. It must have something good to say. Uh, maybe they. You know, I actually I think the email was something like when the Boy Scouts were first letting girls in or something. Uh. And, and I think they said, man, maybe we, we need to have something on this out there. So right. Well, you know, the Troops of St. George is a new – have you heard about the Troops oh, yeah. of St. George? Oh, they're, yeah. They're doing great we, stuff. Yeah, we had them on our show. We love those guys. Tell us about this book. Lead us through this whole thing about this rite of passage, which has basically been lost right. to, this, yeah, we don't to, have- to the millennial generation and the generation below, below, below them. Sure. Uh, well, it's really important before we talk about rites of passage for just boys – to know, because a lot of people think every intense experience they have, man, that was like a rite of passage. Wow, that was awesome. It's really not. They can just be really intense experiences. Uh, the reason a rite of passage exists, broadly speaking, so not just boys becoming men, but you know things like marriage, is when there's one state of life here and there's another state of life here and you want to transition to the other one, but those two were in conflict. You can't live them at the same time. You cannot be both single and married at the same time. There's got to be a change. Uh, the rite of passage is an is an anthropological term used to describe how societies, cultures, and all of them have these used uh, kind of cultural means to help people and ceremonial means to help people go from one state of life to another state of life to completely leave one state behind so that they can embrace a new one. Because if they didn't, they'd be in conflict. And you, I mean, you're married. The most that's the most obvious example people know is, is, you know, if you're a single guy acting married, you're probably sinning. 
if you're a married guy acting single, you're probably hurting your family. Uh, well, so, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a single guy acting married, you're hurting people too. Yeah, you are hurting. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting other people mm-hmm. around you. Um, so we know that there's a problem there. The, the point of a rite of passage is to make the definitive mark that you are no longer a single man. You are now a married man. And so the book goes through very clearly what makes a rite of passage occur. Because a lot of us think, man, if we just do intense stuff with our boys, they'll have a rite of passage, which is absolutely not true. So a big part of the book is to get rid of the sensational aspects of it, like let's go kill lions or something, uh, and get rid of the silliness about it where it's just – it's really – it's not going to work. And it's going to cause harm if you just try to – or if, if you don't do anything. So in a sense, we can be passive or we can be overly aggressive, and we really don't want either one of those. Well, some of it then is just machismo, but there is that <laughs> sort – but one of the things about – and I want to talk about that that initial passage from boyhood to young man before even you're married. Sure. But, but I can say this, that – I know in Hawaii, when I walk along the beach, hi, uncle, aloha, uncle. So everybody calls Cindy auntie and me uncle. So there are other men, uh, and and they'll come to you, and they'll they'll tell you things, they'll ask you things, you know, um, men that they respect. In Hawaii, there is that sense that you're surrounded by uncles. There are other men that are there to mentor you and believe in you. And I think one of the greatest gifts a man can give to a younger man is respect. Uh, you, you know, from your father, you expect it, but when it comes from someone who uh, reaches out to you in a special way to maybe correct you or whatever, it has a, even sometimes even a greater impact in some ways because there's other men affirming you. Um, tell me, oh, we gotta get, we've got to take a break, man. This is Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and I need to invite you, men, I would say 18 and above, to join with us in Bear's Man Cave. It's a very unique, it's a secret Facebook group. You cannot join it by going to Facebook. You have to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You got a man up, and I think it's a $20 a month or $15 a month membership. Uh, to become a member, and then we make you a member of the of Bears Man Cave, the secret Facebook group, and there you're going to find men that will we the men all post um, inspirational things, challenging things, uh, questions that they have, uh, challenges that they're facing, prayer requests, and and it's it's a it's a place for brotherhood, and then we take it a step beyond, and every two to three weeks we have a man cave meetup where we have a two way video chat. Where you know, uh, you know, we can see each other and talk with each other. We open up just by saying, "Hey, what's going on in the, everybody's lives?" And then we take a journey through my book, "Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue," which was meant to kind of be read in a in a uh, a setting where people are. It can be read either way, but it's meant to be kind of read, uh, you know, five or six page chapter, so men can read and talk about, or not just men, anyone can talk about about it. But we're going through the virtues, so we're we're on that. In the man cave, we're actually modeling how other how men can start their own man cave. A lot of them they meet on the back deck of their houses every couple of weeks, have a cigar, shot of whiskey, and they don't talk about politics. They don't talk about sports. They talk about uh, moral and doctrinal teaching and how to in their spiritual walk and real issues related to family and things like that. So, women go to the go to Bears Man Cave, sign your man up. Men go sign your young your young your sons that are of eighteen age eighteen years of old or older. Join us at Bears Man Cave at deepadventure.com. We have as our guest Jason Craig, who that kind of subject of the man cave is kind of like uh, consistent with his, his, uh, his, his work that God's given him, which is this, this passage from boyhood to manhood. Jason, what's the name of the book again? Leaving Boyhood Behind, Reclaiming and Catholic Brotherhood. Reclaiming Catholic. Leaving Boyhood Behind, Le- Reclaiming Catholic Brotherhood. By the Sunday Visitor, who I love those guys. And then your website is thosecatholicmen.com. Did I get that part right? Yeah. Well, that's a, I, I'm the editor for that site. So okay. fratern, there's Fraternus and then stjosephsfarm.com is our farming apostolate. So say, if they want to contact you, though, what site should they go to? Sure. stjosephsfarm.com. Okay, cool. Jason, talk to us about um, that transition, the, the initial transition. I think of it as the Eagle Scout. 
age back sure. in the day, right? That transition yeah. or the age of confirmation might be that too. That transition from boyhood, that initial transition. Tell us about that. Sure. Well, you, yeah, you were kind of, uh, you intuitively shared a very important part of that, which is the community that's surrounding the boys as they're going up. So going back to the idea of a rite of passage, I said, you know, in our last segment that it's helping you to transition from one state of life to another that is going to be in conflict if you don't make the jump. So the reason you have to leave boyhood behind is that it's going to be in conflict. If you keep living like a boy when it's time to be a man, you're going to be in conflict. So I love at the end of, you know, everyone reads the first Corinthians 13 at weddings and things. Love is this, love is that, look kind and all. They forget at the end of that discourse, he says, when I was a boy, I acted like a boy. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So he is St. Paul associates sacrificial, self-giving love with growing up. And that's common in the New Testament. You know, St. Peter says you need to grow up to salvation. St. Paul says we want to grow into the full maturity of, of the manhood of Christ. Uh, he says, I wish you could grow up and stop drinking spiritual milk. I wish you could eat meat. Mm -hmm. you know, there's this, that's the image because when we become Christians, when we give our life over to God, we become sons of the Father. And those sons need to grow up to spiritual maturity. Which is why, you know, he even gives us he gives us kind of sweet grace early on and then he pulls that back further and further so that we draw closer to him and grow up and kind of stand on our own feet. It's kinda of, it's kinda of like a, that 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 pullback of God's love. Right. Uh that, that initial sort of sweetness of the experience of him. But I, my dad taught me that now when you when we're planting these plants, I think we we're planting a tree or something, uh we're gonna water it really good. And then we're gonna soak it so the roots develop and go down deep. We're not just going to give it water on the surface or the roots won't go deep, but we're going to soak it really good. And the roots will begin to go down deep. And then we're not going to feed it. We're not going to give it water. It's going to have to go out and search for water. And then when we feed it again, we'll give it lots and lots of water. That The dryness in our life is so that our, so that our, our roots will go deeper, very Carmelite, right? Which I know yeah, you, that's you love. Right. So, so, so part, part of being a man is you're not getting nurtured by your mom anymore. Uh, right. It's a sort of a different sort of uh, experience of exactly. love, you begin to experience hard love, and and uh, and and the challenging uh, feeling of I got to search out, I got to go deeper. I can't just sure. live on the surface. Yeah, you're hit. You're hitting another. I mean, so when we talk about a rite of passage, there's three stages you have to have. And I'm getting this. This is this is absurd. This isn't Jason Craig's three formulas for becoming a man. This is observable human nature, natural law that we can observe. This is a human need. So God has implanted this in us because. All cultures, all societies throughout time have always had these rites of passages, rites of passage for boys. And you said at the beginning of the show, and you're right, we don't have them anymore. And it's true, we don't. So the three stages for a boy to become a man, so these three things that must happen is, and this is true for any rite of passage like marriage, is you have to leave the former way of life behind. You have to stop living in that way. In a certain way, that way of life has to die. If it doesn't die, there won't be the resurrection in the next life. The second stage is the initiation, that transition. That's where you learn to wrestle with, understand, grapple your strength. You're kind of given your identity. And then the third stage is that you're incorporated into some body of people, you know, like a belonging that uh, really embodies that new way of life that you're embracing. So in the case of marriage, you have to leave your single life behind. You cling to your wife. And then the two become one flesh, just like Scripture says. For this reason, a man must leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two become in corpus, incorporated, one flesh. That's that last stage. Uh, when you come into the church, the sacraments of initiation in the church follow the same pattern. Baptism. Don't you know you who have been baptized in Christ have been baptized into his death? So your old way of life is put to death. Then confirmation, you're sealed with your identity and who you are, which is directly related to, confirm to baptism. And then you're incorporated into the body ongoing. So that incorporation, that last stage, that never ends. So we don't stop receiving the Holy Eucharist in this life. And just like when you, when you become one body with your wife, you don't stop becoming more and more one flesh. For a boy, he has to leave his boyhood behind, which we need to talk about this as a whole section. He needs to leave the world of the mother behind. He has to be severed from the, from the world of the mother. Then he has to be introduced to both his identity as a man and his strength, what he's capable of. He's been a boy his whole life. He knows how to be a boy. He's never been a man. It requires an introduction because they're two different things. They're not – being a boy and being a man are not the same thing. And he's under the care of his mother. Now he's going to be under the care of the men. He needs an introduction to that world. That's that second stage. 
So they, that's the one that everyone gets sensational about. That's the lion killing, the you know dark trek through the jungle or whatever. Those are all those stories, which are great, but that's just one part of a rite of passage. The most important part is actually the last part. You can't even begin this process if the last part's not there. And that's they're incorporated into a, a body of men, a fraternal body of men that belongs. So when you – I started nodding because when people are introduced to this, they, they recognize, oh, yeah, I, I've seen that or I haven't seen it. I recognize the void. But you thought immediately on – in Hawaii when they say the uncles, you know, the other men that are there, it doesn't matter how good of a father I am to my sons. They require a fraternity of men that they belong to. That they want to be a part of because you've seen young men when they go haywire, they go out to find themselves. They don't find themselves. They find a group to belong to. Right. They find someone else to join. They get the same tattoo as them, wear the same clothes, wear their hair, listen to the same music. They, they want to belong. And when we don't provide that as men, that's where the downfall is. So if you don't get those three stages right, if you don't have separation from the boyhood, separ- you know, your childhood. So if you're not initiated and then you're not incorporated. You got to have all three of those. So you're challenging happen. not just the young men out there, or, or the boys, or the boys that never grew up to become men. You're challenging those who are really men to reach out and find a way to uh, yeah. to bring the younger men in. You know, my son was uh, on an evangelistic trip into Nepal, and as they went out into the jungles, they noticed as they approached the villages, there were up uh, tree stands, and those though the, those were constantly manned around the village, little village, uh, to look out for rogue elephants. <laughs> One came right in through a, a, te- a, a shack my son was staying in. Why are there rogue elephants? The males Be- are gone. Yeah, right? because they've come in and they've killed the males for their um, tusks or whatever you would call I forget what they're called. But anyway, um, the, the, and so these young teenage elephants are going crazy because they haven't been uncled. And so That's men right. who are listening, get involved with the troops of St. George or in some way, uh, maybe you have a nephew who's, uh, maybe you're, maybe, uh, who doesn't have a father in the home. One of the biggest challenges we have today is there's a lot of man-hating women raising boys because the man in their life uh, betrayed them and didn't live up to his kuleana, as we say. And the boy then is living with a woman who, who d- doesn't respect or is afraid of men. And so we, as, as older men, need to reach out to the younger men and uh, challenge them uh, and uh, to to become men, to come into the community of men, and also to stand uh, in love. To be a man means to lay down your life. We'll be right back with our guest, Jason Craig. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We need to make an announcement. My Ocean Sunrise Catechism that I teach every morning sometime around 7 to 7.30 on Facebook Live uh, has been on my personal page, and it's been a long time in coming. You can only have 5,000 members, and I've been at that limit for a long time, so we're limited as to who we can reach with our Ocean Sunrise Catechism on that Facebook Live page. So we're moving to Facebook Live, but to our fan page called Bear Wozniak Space Deep Adventure. If you go there and like that page, then you can participate because every morning, no matter where I am in the world, 7 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., somewhere in that time frame, bear time is when that airs. So if I'm in Rome or if I'm in Australia or if I'm in wherever I happen to be uh, in Hawaii at this point, it's 7 a.m. Hawaii time. So sometimes you'll see it at 7 a.m. Eastern. Sometimes you see it at 2 p.m. Eastern. It varies, but... If you if you follow us and like us on that page, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure, it'll give you a little notification that we're up. And what has happened with with the Ocean Sunrise Catechism? Usually, there's an ocean behind me wherever I am. Um, is it's, it's developed a, a little bit of a community. So as I'm I'm reading and teaching in a very you know the Bear Wozniak style, so it makes the catechism much more accessible to our understanding. Uh, we're going line by line by line right now. Today I did 20, paragraph 2468. So oh, it's, it's going to take us almost three years to get through the catechism, and then we're going to start over. <clears throat> but as I'm doing that, people are, are asking me questions or commenting and talking to one another. And every day, so it opens up a, a community thread, in a sense, where people are praying and dialoguing, communicating with each other. So it opens up kind of a friendship right there. So go to Bear Wozniak uh, Space Deep Adventure. And um, uh, well, there's a space between each of the words, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. And you will be able to find... Uh, uh, find us there and follow us. We're talking with Jason Craig 
on probably one of the most vital, vital topics that you could talk about today, and that's the rite of passage from boyhood to being a man. What is the name of your book again, Jason? Leaving Boyhood Behind. And the subtitle? Reclaiming Catholic Brotherhood. And where can they find you, the easiest way for them to find you? Sure. Uh, if they want to reach me or buy the book, they can go to stjosephsfarm.com or St. fraternus.com. So um, we were talking about this initial rite of passage, and I want to give us a little bit more information about that. Then I'd like to talk about one of your retreats, what, because it's a good example of what really you're looking to do, one of your kind of like boys to men type retreats. Sure. Uh, so so what is that transition like for the the young boy then what what is he what needs well let, give tell us about your retreat that'd be a good sure. way to do it sure well we yeah we can describe what needs to happen and then how that kind of happens on the retreat i try not to overpromise the retreat so bring your boys and they'll leave them in um but i do at the retreats we introduce them to all these ideas and and one of the best things that happens is that they're there just as men separated just there's no women around not that we don't love women i married one uh but uh there needs to be time for that brotherhood because, <clears throat> like I said, the first stage of rite of passage is they have to be separated from their mother. So being there without their mother is really important. Dude, when I uh, when I take when I take someone out surfing, like I took so, uh, a young man out the other day who was had uh, autism, but the, the mother is always there nurturing, nurturing, nurturing. Right? Yeah. And I can't I I can't teach him how to surf. I can't yeah. even when I'm doing the beach lesson. I ask her to go at least a hundred yards away. Right. Yeah. So that, we. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. I yeah. dig exactly what you're saying. Well, here, here's the thing. So think about this. When a when a baby enters the world at conception, he's in utopia. He's in the, he's in the <laughs> womb, right? He's yeah. in, he gets he's never cold, never hot, never hungry, never lonely. He's comforted by he's literally like one flesh with his mother. So then he goes through birth, fairly traumatic. But what does she do? She tries. She recreates the utopia. She keeps him fed. She keeps him warm. Doesn't let him get cold. All that keeps him happy. Shushes him. In, in a certain way, mothers do that to boys, and that's exactly what they're supposed to do. So we shouldn't say, oh, you know, mothers, overbearing mothers. But that's at why that you're... moment, at that, there's that moment, like when I take those, those younger boys, those young, like 13, 15-year-old, that kind of age group, when I need to take them yep. alone so I can teach them. Yeah, yeah you're right, because she's, she's not going to stop being a mother. She's been through a rite of passage that took her from being a woman to being a mother, different things. So birth brought her a new identity. So she's never going to stop being a mother to the boy. But there needs to be a moment where he's separated from her, where she gets to experience, you know what, my boy, he died so that a man can be born. And if he doesn't die to me and if I hang on to him and don't let him go. Uh, so in the book, I detail the, you know, this instance of Jesus when he's 12, he's lost in the temple. It's very clearly a rite of passage. Yeah, so we go absolutely. through that line by line. Because in fact, St. Luke begins and it, he says, the boy Jesus stayed behind and all the, in it, the chapter before, chapter one, chapter two, he always says infant Jesus or boy Jesus. After this instance, he's just Jesus. So he drops the boy and he goes home. And, and he grew in wisdom and stature before both man and God. Right. But, but what, what kept him at the temple was the other men. He was there. He was with the other men. The, the, the teachers, the rabbis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His mother questions, what, how did you do this? He says, don't you know I must be about my father's business? She's silent. She receives that. She ponders this in her heart. Um, so if a boy, if that doesn't happen, if, she, if he never has a separation or the mother and him don't see that the change has occurred, she's going to keep him in adolescence. That's what is going to happen. And you just think about when you're in college, you go home, you visit your mom, you bring your laundry, she cooks for you. Are you comfortable? Do you want another, you want dessert? You want to go out? Your favorite, you know, she, your favorite meal. That's right. She keeps you comfortable. And there's probably men listening right now. They know they're like married. They go home, visit mom, and all of a sudden they like regress into the, being a boy because mm. she can't help it. It's weird. Um, it's weird. It's, it's weird. <laughs> and so that's why, I mean, and it's, it's the job of men to help bring about that change. So what do, uh, you know, who they say cut the apron strings or, you know, men traditionally cutting the umbilical cord. The job of the men is to recognize, okay, hey, boy, you've been inside too long. Time to come out with me to join the men, and I'm going to show you, not in a non-judgmental way. I'm going to introduce you to a strength you don't even know you have yet. Mm. I'm gonna, okay, it's been great. Life has been great, but life as a boy is about to end. It's time to die to that life so that you can rise again and be a man. And this, all cultures, all cultures had ways of this occurring, and we did too. For the West, it was primarily in Western civilization. It's been primarily through work. I mean, there's other ways, like in the South where I live, it's, you know, hunting and the, the, 
the tradition of blooding a boy. Have you ever heard of blooding? Have you ever heard that phrase? No. So it's where a boy goes out with his uncles, his father, his first hunt. He kills the deer, which can be traumatic, and they actually wipe the blood on his face, and they he joins in with the men, and it's that probably sounds gross to some listeners, but it's just the it's an example culturally of how it's that happens. reality, man. It's you're reality. a mediator. If, if you're a mediator, that's reality. Yeah. But, so and you just described it when you're teaching those boys on the beach, mom. You've got to go away, or I can't teach them to swim. I can't teach them to join my world of being a surfer, being a man. When you're right there, because you're smothering. You know, there's no such thing as fathering. You know, it's smothering. You gotta. You yeah. Gotta and get so you're back. speaking right now, uh, mom, you know, to women, not just to young men Absolutely. and to, to, yeah. to their fathers. A young boy needs to be about his father's business. Absolutely. Tell me what that means for. What does that sure. mean for the for not just for Jesus, but for the young the the boys that are need to become men? What to be about their yeah. father's business? What does that mean? Well, I want to tell the mothers. I mean, there was a actually I have multiple chapters to mothers in the book mm. because it's they need they're part of the rite of passage. They're not passive. It doesn't just happen to they they have a role, um, and. But they have to, at some point, let go and release that son. So the message to them is don't hold on to him. You know, Make sure that he's allowed to go out. Uh, being about his father's business. My parents are divorced, and when I was 12, it was posed to me, do you want to live with your mother, which I had done for my whole life, or do you want to live with your father? And my answer was I must be about my father's business. You know, There's a desire. Sometimes there's a mistrust. And, and for me, it was actually being about my father's business. It's actually working next to him, you know, doing physical labor. He's just kind mm -hmm. of a blue collar construction guy. Um, and that was allowed to happen because there was a trusting relationship between my mother and my father. Mm. If my mother, on the other hand, didn't trust my father, she doesn't want me to become a man, which is all these classic Greek tragedies and mm -hmm. myths. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the mother is holding back. Mm -hmm. she, she doesn't want him to become a man because she knows what a man is capable of, which in her life is pain. It's hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if a mother doesn't have these trusting relationships, then maybe the father's out of the picture. He's, we shouldn't be about his business. You've got to have mentors. So I get emails all the time because of fraternists, this mentoring organization I work for, these moms, hey, I've got this, I got this nephew, I got my son. What can I do for him? My answer is nothing. You, you've got well, to find a man. We're talking with Jason Craig, and we've run out of time. Hey, Jason, as soon as we're done with this show – Let's email each other and get you right back on. I mean, maybe the next four to five months, get you on again. We're kind of booked with appointments up until then, or maybe Great. sooner. But I just, I really enjoy you personally, for one. And uh, I think that your message is so vital to young men, to uh, to men, and to the mothers. I think it's so true. And where can that? What's the name of this book? And everyone should get this book right now. What is it called? Leaving Boyhood Behind. In the subtitle. Re Reclaiming Catholic Brotherhood, Our leaving, Sunday Visitor. Leaving Boyhood Behind. And if it's by Our Sunday Visitor, uh, that's a good book. And your TV show on EWTN, they can get DVDs. What's it called? Rites of Passage, Leaving Boyhood Behind. Okay. And the, and the one website, the easiest one for them to find you? com. Okay. And what's the uh, square root of – no, okay. <laughs> that's enough <laughs> questions. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you for joining us. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Subscribe to our email, and you get to get our – our radio shows weeks before they're aired and usually, and, and you get the video version of them. Uh, so go to our website, deepadventure.com. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.